Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I received so many nice comments uh, for my series of videos on the Roland MC505 and there is still so much to say about this machine. And today I want to talk about the rather quirky stuff. Uh, well, it, it's actually quite a serious bug that I want to talk about today. And I hope that you're not going to hate me after watching this video because the things I have to say are really unpleasant. And um, the workaround that I want to, that I can offer um, is also a rather bad compromise. And um, yeah, it can become quite frustrating when you focus on these weak uh, aspects of this beautiful machine. It is still one of my favorites and I want to say right away that you should not judge the MC505 uh, merely on these quirks that I'm going to talk about. Um, it is a very specific uh, problem that can occur but it does not necessarily occur any time you want to work with this machine. And uh, I have experienced similar problems in all types of other machines, also the um, Cork Electribes, they have a similar problem where you get this kind of gap in between patterns and you hear a, just a very short pause between patterns, which is rather similar to what's happening in the MC505. It can become really irritating, but you should really not focus on this too much because um, in the end, there is no such thing as a perfect machine, right? And and when you're aware of these quirks and you can look for workarounds and uh, somehow manage to, to uh, figure out ways around these problems, um, you're much better off um, to focus really on the strength of the machine and not on its downsides. And every machine has its downside. I'm always really surprised by how forgiving people are when it comes to analog gear, which really have many, many bad quirks, really, really um, limitations that can, yeah, that really uh, take away much of the usefulness of some of these analog instruments. And, and people seem to be so forgiving about it. But if a digital machine does something uh, a little in, in, in a very, well, a rather special way to, to say the least. Um, then uh, people are up on the fence and they are really, uh, I don't know, condemning uh, the whole machine uh, judged merely upon these negative aspects. And I think that's a little bit unfair. Also, when directly comparing the MC505 to the Cork EMX, the MC505 has so much more to offer. Um, and it is more complicated to use because there are so many more options for you uh, to write your, your uh, patterns and beats. Um, so of course it is not that easy to handle. Uh, and the workflow aspect in the Cork EMX is far superior, of course, but also there's not that much to expect from it to begin with. And I, I, I also, just like with the analog stuff, I have a feeling that whenever a company comes out with a limited concept for a machine and then offers workarounds that, that uh, give you the impression that it actually can do more than what was promised, they get away with it better even if what they promised to begin with is really, really limited instead of a machine like the MC505 that seems like it's capable of doing anything imaginary and then failing at certain aspects that, of course, it is always a disappointment to find out about limitations that you weren't aware of. But overall, the MC505 in all its, its sound structure, the sound design, the, all the different tools you get in this machine, you have so much more to work with than you get with the Cork EMX, which also has a, a wonderful sound for itself. Lots of character. I love both of these machines. Uh, absolutely. But um, I, I, whenever I, re I read so many negative comments on the MC505 and so much, well, almost glorifying 
the stuff concerning the Quark EMX that I just wanted to make this statement that it doesn't really make sense to me. I think uh, you should really embrace these machines for the things they can do for you and not focus too much on their downsides. Um, which is also, well, yeah, something that I had to learn for myself. Uh, I got rid of my Octatrack uh, because I didn't get along with it and uh, wasn't aware of its serious limitations uh, because no one seemed to talk about it. And um, that's why, even though I'm a huge fan of the MC505, I don't want to uh, just ignore its limitations and frustration that can come along uh, with uh, working with this unit. All right, this this was a lot of uh, intro talk so far, and I'm not even done yet because there's some something else I wanted to get off my chest. Um, if you watch my videos um, and you're pressed for time, uh, then basically, uh, please don't. <laughs> Just don't watch if you're pressed for time because um, I like to uh, babble a lot, as you can tell. Uh, I like to not always stick to a, a strict uh, concept. I'm never writing any scripts for these videos. I'm uh, uh, talking about this stuff. Just, uh, this is always a, a, a one shot uh, recording. Always, um, I, I make several versions if I'm not happy with the first attempts of shooting a video, but it's never, I, you won't see any cut in my videos ever. Um, I just make a one take recording, babble and babble on uh, about the things that I have to uh, have to say, and then uh, I press stop and that's it. Um, someone has recently asked me for timestamps for the different topics that I cover in my videos, but I don't want to. I don't even want to do that. Um, it is kind of flattering actually to hear um, this um, to to be asked for something like this. Um, but like I said, my videos are not well structured. Um, someone who does this really uh, in, in a very uh, admirable way <laughs> is Lupop. He does some amazing, very well structured videos, but I'm not like that. I like to babble. I like to be myself. And if you're pressed for time or have a problem with my voice or my accent, uh, then please just don't watch. If you want to send in timestamps, for me to uh, to pin uh, to my comments, there's a good chance I will pin um, your timestamps if they are correct, you know, for the different topics that I cover in the video. But I don't want to provide these myself because it would raise high expectations that I probably won't be able to live up to. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, that's okay. Now I have that out of the way. Um, and uh, okay, just uh, yeah, maybe to underline this a little bit that I'm sometimes really just uh, not well structured. Uh, I want to throw in because this is something that I wanted also wanted to do for a long time. Uh, just very quickly allow me to give you a little recommendation on headphones here because I'm using these Biodynamic Custom Studio headphones. These have a uh, an adjustable bass reflex system here with four different settings you can choose. This is hardly any bass with uh, the um, with the bass reflex system all the way closed or almost closed. Then, and then you have these different uh, settings that you can use. They are very similar to the DT770 Pro's uh, 80 ohms version, but in addition to sounding close to the DT770 Pros, they have this bass reflex system, which I think makes them extremely flexible. If you're a singer, you want to, you're standing in front of a mic, you don't want uh, any bleeding of the sound into the mic, you just close these all the way up, then they're really quiet, pretty quiet. And then for even for just consumer listening to music, you can, uh, open these all the way up to so get a very bass heavy sound um, which is really quite nice very flexible and i like these a lot so i just quickly wanted to talk about them yeah i don't get any money for recommending these just in case you're wondering 
I'm just uh, I, I'm using these for maybe like uh, maybe a, a little less than a year now and I'm really happy with these so I wanted to talk about it okay so but now on to the Roland MC505 um, there is a bad bug I, 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 won't, I won't even call it a quirk because this is really a bug and it's serious and, and uh, when you focus on this uh, too much like I said it can take away part of your fun that you're having with the MC505 but please um, be aware of the workarounds that I also want to talk about actually this is not only one bug, it is actually more like uh, two sides to one and the same bug that I want to talk about. And one of them can uh, kind of be fixed um, with the loop rest function, which I also have not yet seen covered in any other video. Um, and uh, But basically um, it sums up like this. It is not really a good idea to record notes in a pattern of the MC505 that are extended over the loop point. So let's say you have a four bar loop and you want to place a note somewhere maybe on pad 15 in a 16th note grid scale. And this note should be extended so that it lasts for maybe like two more quarter notes uh, uh, when the pattern skips back to the start. So you, that you can hear it uh, fade out or, or the note being held over this period of time. Then this note will cut off. You will not hear the extended sound. And in a forum, this bug is referred to as the sustain bug. Um, yeah, of course, you want to sustain a note, note cuts off, so it's just, just they call it the sustain bug. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this and I'm also going to demonstrate a workaround for this. I have set up something here for pattern 28 and 29. Please watch when I press play that the, um, the number in the display starts blinking uh, one bar before it reaches the loop point. Then the pattern repeats and there's no problem whatsoever when the pattern repeats by itself but whenever switching over to the next pattern there the problem can be heard okay so i'm going to press play we're going to see the display number blinking okay you just heard the pattern playing repeatedly and uh, you get a smooth transition from the sound, right? I mean, you can hear at the same time as you hear the note fading out, you can also hear the same sound fade in for the start of the, of the um, pattern that's playing here. I have this recorded, the rhythm part is muted and this is part one in pattern 28. So, um, whenever you have a pattern playing repeatedly, you don't get any um, cut off, any, any notes that are cut off or anything. But now, when I switch over to pattern 29, you will hear something different. And I'm going to press play again. So now I'm waiting for the note to start. Okay. Did you hear that? Did you just hear that? There was the note was cut off there. The fade out was cut and then um, it's like an all sound off command at the beginning of pattern 29 and then the note starts fading in slowly. So again, switching over to pattern 29. Okay, there you heard it. There was a short, just a very short um, cut um, with no sound and then the note started fading in. It should have sounded like this. So now let's 
let me talk about the workaround. When I have, well, first I want to show you something. Um, pattern 28, I have these two parts. In pattern 29, I have these two parts. Instead of using the rhythm part and part one, I'm using part two, but part two sounds exactly like part one in pattern 28. So why is that? Because this still allows me to get a smooth transition from part one into part two of pattern 29. I could not use part one in pattern 29 because then the note would be cut off. I could not make a smooth, smooth transition. So again, um, and I only can have a smooth transition that sounds just like pattern 28 sounds when it's played repeatedly. Um, I need to be, I need to have part one, always the part that is supposed to make a smooth transition into another part, which is recorded to sound exactly the same, only if I have it currently selected. If I don't, you just heard the note cut out. If I have it selected, it will sound just like I'm playing pattern eight, uh, 28 repeatedly. Okay, listen to this. Now I'm on pattern 29 already and I got a smooth transition. So now, now I'm on part one, I should be on part two to make a smooth transition back to pattern 28, but I'm not. So you are going to hear the cut again when the pattern changes. Okay, now pay close attention. And then the note fades in slowly again. Did you hear that? I hope you did. I am back on part one in pattern 28. I can now type in um, pattern 29 again and I will get a smooth transition again. All right, there you hear the note fading out and fading in at the same time. And now, when I switch to part two in pattern 29 and now go back to 28, I will also get a smooth transition. Listen to this. The number 28 starts blinking. Now it's a change to pattern, back to pattern 28. And it sounded just like pattern 28 sounds playing repeatedly. All right. So, so that is really weird and um, something to be aware of this only works for only one part even with this workaround which is rather well a, a pretty bad compromise that you have to have this part that's supposed to make a smooth transition you need to have it selected even if you stick to all these rules, taking a different part that is written in the exact same way as the part that you, you're coming from. Um, and even if you have that currently selected, you still have the limitation that this is the only part that can even make a smooth transition. You cannot have um, a similar event like is programmed on part one on all the other parts too and have them played um, into the next pattern making a smooth transition. There all the sounds will cut off. Yeah, and this is, yeah, I, I, but okay, as bad as it sounds and it is, it is a serious, it is a serious bug. But I must still admit that I haven't even found out about this myself. I was told by someone who contacted me in the comments 
uh, I actually, um, um, yeah, we, we were we were talking quite about uh, quite a bit about the MC505. Really nice guy from Czechoslovakia. If you're watching this, uh, hi to you. <laughs> Hope you're okay. Um, yeah, uh, it is it is an annoying bug, but the MC505 can build patterns with a maximum length of up to 32 bars. Um, so for a maximum amount of 32 bars, you can have smooth transitions within a song um, that will not give you this problem. Um, in the MC909, I think it's even more than that. I think you can even have up to a, a, a thousand, up, up to a thousand bars, or I think it was like a, a, a funny number, like 998 bars maximum in the MC909, because the MC909 also has this problem. I think all the MC groove boxes do actually. I'm not too sure on this, but I think they all have this uh, limitation. And it's just something to be to be aware of. Um, yeah. Okay. Again, you can avoid this by taking a different part number than what you're coming from. Leave the um, part that you're coming from completely blank in the pattern that you're transitioning to. So this take even also this takes away one of your parts. Yeah. I know how bad this sounds, but actually I want to make uh, many more videos and on the MC505 and talk a little bit more about the positive aspects later on. I thought I'd get the negative stuff out of the way first and um, then come up with, with uh, other more positive things to talk about. So um, also I don't want to make this video too long, so I think I should maybe end this here. Thanks a lot for watching. In the next video, I want to talk about the loop rest function, uh, which also has to do with this bug in a way. And I want to um, show you a workaround for that. Okay, so much for now. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.